Brazil are renowned for having produced some of the finest talents in the history of football. But none of them were quite as unique as Garincha. Garincha was a key part of some of Brazil national team's finest moments. But his story is a bittersweet one, full of triumph, but sadly, tragedy as well. This is the story of Garincha, Brazil's tragic hero. Manuel Francisco dos Santos was born on the 28th of October 1933. He was born with a deformed spine, which resulted in both his legs being bent, and his left leg was 6 centimeters shorter than his right. Doctors thought he would never even be able to walk properly. Due to his short height, he was given the nickname Garincha, the Brazilian word for the wren, a small bird. He would begin to work at a local factory at the age of 14, where he greatly impressed when turning out for the factory's football team. At 19 years old, he was persuaded to train with Botafogo. During his first training session, he nutmegged Brazil fullback Nilton Santos to put his name on the map. Santos was so impressed with Garincha that he persuaded the Botafogo board to sign him. Garincha made his debut against Bonsu Kesso on the 19th of July 1953. He immediately proved Nilton Santos right by netting a hat-trick. Garincha was now on the scene, and he set Brazilian football alight. Supporters loved seeing his carefree, entertaining style of play. He used the bends of his legs to trick defenders, turning his physical challenges into an advantage, proving the doctors who doubted him wrong. Due to intense competition in the winger positions, Garincha was not selected in a Brazil squad for the 1954 World Cup. He would, however, score 20 goals in 26 games, as he helped Botafogo win the Campeonato Carioca in 1957. His fine form persuaded Vincente Fiola to pick him as part of the squad for the 1958 World Cup in Sweden. Only 10 days before the World Cup, in a match against Fiorentina, Garincha pulled off a move that symbolised his approach to football. He dribbled past four defenders and the goalkeeper before stopping on the goal line. As a Fiorentina defender came to try and stop him, Garincha dribbled around him and finally put the ball into the net. It was characteristic of his entertainer's style, but the coaches were not impressed, as they expected him to conduct himself with more professionalism. As a result, Garincha would miss out on the first two games of Brazil's World Cup campaign. But in their third match of the tournament, Garincha would start, alongside a young Pele, against the USSR. The Soviets were amongst the favourites for the tournament, but Brazil tore them to shreds. Fiola set up the side to attack relentlessly, with both Garincha and Pele hitting the woodwork early on. Brazil would win the game 2-0. The Brazilians then beat Wales 1-0 in the quarter-finals, with Wales fullback Mel Hopkins afterwards describing Garincha as a phenomenon capable of sheer magic. A 5-2 win over France saw Brazil to the final, where they would face Sweden. Sweden went ahead early on, but Garincha swung across into the box for Vava, who would level the scores. Shortly before half-time, Garincha would again swing the ball in for Vava, who would again score. Brazil would win the game 5-2 and seal their first ever World Cup, with Garincha being named in the tournament's best 11. After the World Cup, Garincha began drinking a lot, which caused him to put on weight and briefly lose his spot in the Brazil squad. At one point, when Botafogo were on tour in Sweden, he got a local girl pregnant. Upon returning to Brazil, he ran over his own father whilst driving, and was found afterwards drunk with no idea of what he had done. However, Garincha would return to the squad for the 1962 World Cup in Chile. Brazil opened their campaign with a 2-0 victory over Mexico. Their second game would be against Czechoslovakia. The game finished 0-0, and during the match, Pele sustained an injury that ruled him out for the rest of the tournament. It was now on Garincha to be the star. In Brazil's final group game, Garincha set up Amarildo to net the winner in a 2-1 victory over Spain and send them to the quarter-finals. Brazil would be up against England. England had some of the best players in the world, including Jimmy Greaves and Bobby Charlton, so Garincha 
had to be on his best form, and Garincha would deliver. He opened the scoring with a rare header, and Varva would double Brazil's lead by scoring on a rebound from Garincha's free kick. Garincha then scored a beautiful goal from outside the area to seal a 3-1 win for the Brazilians. Up next were Chile, and Garincha's fine form continued. Garincha scored twice and assisted another as Brazil emerged as 4-2 winners. However, it was not all sunshine and rainbows for Garincha. The Chileans resorted to violent tactics to contain the winger, and eventually Garincha retaliated by kneeing a player in the back. The referee gave Garincha a straight red card. Fortunately, at the time, a red card did not mean an automatic suspension, and Garincha would eventually be allowed to partake in the final. Brazil cruised to a 3-1 victory over Czechoslovakia in the final to seal a second consecutive World Cup. Garincha had scored four vital goals in the absence of Pelé, and his entertaining style had earned in the title of the joy of the people. Garincha took Botafogo to another two Campeato Carioca titles, but at this point, his career had peaked. A highly publicised affair with singer Elsa Suarez saw the media turn against him, and his drinking continued. He was part of the Brazil squad for the 1966 World Cup, but this time they went out in the group stages, with their loss against Hungary being the only time they were defeated with Garincha in their side. Garincha would leave Botafogo in 1966 after 12 years at the club and joined Corinthians. He would play for a number of different clubs over the next few years before retiring from the game in 1973. A farewell match was held at the Maracanã to honour Garincha, and over 130,000 spectators were in attendance. Whilst Garincha remained loved, it couldn't stop his demons. He was involved in a car crash in 1969, which killed his mother-in-law, and his drinking continued to escalate. He and Suarez split up after Garincha struck her several times, and he also struggled financially. A frequent womaniser, it is believed that he was a father to around 14 children. Eventually, Garincha's demons would finally get the better of him. On the 29th of January 1983, Garincha died of cirrhosis of the liver at the age of 49. His funeral procession drew millions of people wanting to pay their respects to a man that they adored. His epitaph reads, Here rests in peace the one who was the joy of the people, Mane Garincha. In 2003, a multi-use stadium in Brasilia was renamed the Estadio Nacional Mane Garincha. Garincha may often be overlooked when it comes to Brazilian legends, but he is without a doubt one of the greatest. Whilst his life ended in tragedy, it does not take away what he was able to achieve. A free spirit, who was dealt with a bitter blow from birth, defied the odds, and helped Brazil win their first two World Cups. Garincha was one of a kind, a man who simply loved the game and wanted to entertain, and who, above all, brought joy to the people. <laughs>